All right, here we go for the last recording of for this week. And when you reach me, make sure you have um, everything nice and organized and you're taking notes while listening. If you are purple, you're tomorrow, Thursday the 4th, and then gold Friday the 5th. And we're going to listen to page 76 to 83. All right. Messy things. Anne-Marie and I stopped in the fourth floor bathroom before going back to class after lunch. She said she wanted to wash her hands again after all that turkey. Today was fun, she said, looking at herself in the mirror and combing her hair with her fingers. I wish we got more than 40 minutes for lunch. I hate counting bread, I said. It's boring. She laughed. At least your hands don't smell like chemical turkey. At least you get to goof around behind the counter with Colin, I thought. I'm always running to the store, cleaning up some gunk, or stuck talking to Mr. Yellowstains. Let's go, I said. I'm starving. Julia was standing right outside our classroom, almost as if she was waiting on us. Oh, no, she sighed deeply and pointed at Anne-Marie's arm. Oh, Anne-Marie, your turquoise sweater. It's your favorite. Poor you. And Mom thought I was dramatic. Anne-Marie looked down at the hem of her sweater, which had some mustard on it. I had no idea it was her favorite. It'll come out, Anne-Marie said. My dad will get it out. Julia leaned against the wall and adjusted her headband. What I don't understand is why you're working at all. It's not like you need the money. Here she stopped to glance at me, and no offense, but that kind of that place is kind of disgusting. I saw a roach there once. I like it there, Anne-Marie said. It's actually pretty fun. That guy who works there is gross. He's not gross, I said, and he doesn't, I made air quotes, work there. He owns the store. We don't get paid, Amory said softly. It's just the sandwiches and sodas, I said, waving my Sprite. Right, Julia said, talking just to Anne-Marie as if I didn't exist. Like you're supposed to be eating sandwiches and drinking soda. Anne-Marie's face folded up a little. It's fine. Fine, Julie said. Forget it. Mr. Tompkin came to the door. Why aren't you three inside? Silent re reading period started five minutes ago. As we walked in behind Julia, I whispered to Anne-Marie, no wonder you don't want to be friends with her anymore. She's so rude to you. For a second, Anne-Marie didn't say anything. Then she mumbled, yeah, sometimes, and we separated to go to our desks. Mr. Tompkin had left a book on my desk. It was always, he was always trying to get me to read something new. This one had a picture of a spunky looking girl on the cover and some buildings behind her. I pushed the spunky girl aside, pulled my book out of my desk and opened it randomly to see where I would land. Meg was on the planet, Camatoes, where all these little boys are in front of their marching, matching houses, bouncing their matching balls, all the balls hit the ground at exactly the same moment every time. Then all the boys turn at the same second to go back into their identical houses, except for this one boy. He's outside all alone and his ball rolls into the street. And then his mother comes out looking all nervous and carries him into the house. I was thinking about how much Mr. Tompkin would hate the idea of a place where all the houses look exactly the same when something strung me hard, stung me hard behind the ear. I jerked my head up and saw Julia laughing silently over her book. I looked down on the floor and saw the rubber band she had shot at me at my head. I would thought we were just irritating each other, but I was wrong. This was war. Oh, geez. Invisible things. The next time I saw Marcus, I was absolutely sure he would remember me. I was in the main office because Mr. Tompkin had sent me down to pick up some mimeographs. Why you kids, why you kids need diagrams of the water system is beyond me, Wheelie said as she handed them to me from her chair. They're from Main Street, I told her. We're trying to make working hydrants. Well, that may be the silliest thing I've ever heard, she said, waving me away. I love the smell of new copies. Mom says I have an attraction to dangerous smells. 
like my her main example being the fact that I love to stand in a warm cloud of dry cleaner ex, dry cleaner exhaust and take deep breaths. There's something very food but not food about the smell of dry cleaner exhaust. She always pulls me away and says that she's sure in 10 years we'll find out that it causes horrible diseases. I was walking back toward the stairs silently, inhaling the smell of the 32 freshly copied diagrams of, the, of New York City water system when Marcus came out of the stairwell reading a book. Hey, I said, but he walked right by me past the main office and around the corner to where the dentist's office is. Back in class, I passed out the diagrams like Mr. Tompkin asked me to. I accidentally ripped Julia's before I gave it to her and accidentally crumpled it a little too. Alice Evans was squirming in her chair like she was doing a hula dance. I rolled my eyes. No wonder she was the only sixth grader who had to bring an extra set of clothes to school. Oh, do you think um, Miranda accidentally ripped and accidentally crumpled the paper? Things you hold on to. According to Jimmy, there, there's a $2 bill in circulation for every 12 $1 bills, but people hold on to them. He said, while I was putting on my jacket to go to the store, the light bulb over the sink in the back room had burned out and Jimmy didn't have any extras. People think $2 bills are special. That's why you don't see them around much. Yeah, I thought people like you, but I kept my face blank because I wasn't supposed to know what was in the Fred Flintstone bank. They hate them over at the A&P though. No space in a cash register for a $2 bill. They got to pull out the tray to store them underneath and they always forget they're in there. That's why you have to ask for them. Okay, I said, I'll ask. Anne-Marie was behind the counter with her apron on looking happy. Some kids from school had come in paying customers and she was writing their names in mayonnaise on their sandwiches before pressing her perfect V-tops down onto them. Colin was next to her doing the same. Anne-Marie gestured me over. I noticed that she was either very warm or she was wearing makeup. I'm going to ask Jimmy if we can have meatballs for lunch, she whispered, since it's Thanksgiving tomorrow. Great, I said, even though I didn't find those meatballs any more appealing than my usual cheese sandwich. They just sat there in the pot day after day. I'll be back in a minute, I told her. If anyone orders hot chocolate, tell them to wait for me. There were no $2 bills at the A&P, and when I got back to Jimmy's with the light bulbs, the kids were gone and Julie herself was standing in front of the sandwich counter. Anne-Marie and Colin had started making their lunches already. Jimmy had said no, I guess, to the meatballs because they were picking through the cheese. Julia, who was pretending I hadn't I hadn't just walked in, seemed to be in the middle of a long speech about how American cheese wasn't even real cheese, strictly speaking. I saw her long fingers gesture toward the not cheese, and I knew instantly that her V-cut would be flawless, that by Monday she would be behind that counter and Anne -Marie with, with Anne-Marie and Colin, and that her apron, the same kind that looked gray and baggy on everyone else, would somehow be perfect on her. She would have a way of tucking it up to fit some trick a waiter in Paris had taught her. Then Jimmy came out from the back room holding a stack of dripping plastic plates. You, he pointed at Julia with an armful of trays. Out, I already told you once. Julia snatched her hand back from the setup tray. Anne-Marie flushed. We're just talking, Anne-Marie said. There's no customers here now. Actually, I'm a customer, Julia said, crossing her arms over her chest. I came to buy a sandwich. I have money. She stuck out one pretty, one pretty boot so the green leather tip pointed out at the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Out, Jimmy said, practically growling, growling now. After she left, I pretended uh, along with Anne-Marie that Jimmy was a little bit crazy but as we walked back to school with our cheese and lettuce sandwiches, I carried a new warm feeling inside. Jimmy could be a grouch, but he saw right through Julia, just like I did. All right, and that is the end for this week. I hope you guys have a great day.